Hey crafters! So today is going to be my follow-up from Tuesday's Tutorial Tuesday episode 3 in which we learned how to make plarn! So very cool! And I told you at the end of that video that in today's video I'm going to show you how to spin plarn. So you go from this to this. And I also told you I was going to tell you what I do with these scraps and the handles and things. So we're going to start with spinning plorn, and then when at the very end I'll take a moment to explain what I do with the scraps. Um, also I thought I would just throw this out there. I went ahead and I measured this um, big long string of plorn that I finished putting together after yesterday's video. And this is from two bags and it's about 37 feet long. So I thought that was just kind of a helpful thing to know. Um, because yes, it does take a lot of plastic bags to make plorn. And that's also, you might have uh, realize this by now if you've been working on it. That's why in my previous video I cut three bags at a time because making the plarn can be a little time consuming but hey it's free and it's recycling and it's really fun to work with so it's worth it. So let's talk about how we spin the plarn. You're going to need a drop spindle. You may have remember this you may remember this one from my video where I tried spinning alpaca. Um, you can go ahead and look uh, for the card for that. I think I'm putting on the right side. I might be putting on the wrong side and if not, oh well. But this is a top whirl drop spindle. So the weight is at the top and it's got a hook up here. And so you're going to start by taking your plarn and you want to tie it around this dowel on the drop spindle. So the knot doesn't have to be anything fancy. Try to hold this so you can see what I'm doing. Got a little knot, and then I cinch it up just like that. This one's really nice, my dad made. It's got a little notch in the side, so you can kind of feed it up the side, and then just kind of wrap it around a little bit and catch it in the hook. Now, because it's plarn, or it's plastic bags, plastic can be a little bit slippery. So sometimes when you start spinning it, this part down here may start to twirl itself, but that's, that's why I try to hook it in the little groove there. And so the basic idea is you're going to kind of pinch it between your fingers up here and give this guy a, swir a twirl. And you're just going to kind of keep twirling it and letting the plastic feed through your fingers. I'll hold this up close so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Just kind of spinning. You may notice that you'll get some lumps in it from the knots and things, and that's okay. Um, but if you want to avoid that, then you can try to make your knots neater. Try with your plarn tears to not knot it together. So you can see I'm just kind of giving it a twirl. You can like twirl it and let go. I kind of tend to twirl it and like keep holding it and just kind of giving it this like continual twirl and just letting it spin in my hand. But the idea is you let the weight of this kind of pull down which pulls this the plarn through my fingers and tightens it and it adds that twist into it. So you also might notice that it's getting thinner as we do this process. So once you have a bit um, spun, yeah this is where it's going to start twirling, you might want to hold your finger there, you're just going to wrap it around the dowel at the bottom here. And find the little groove again, wrap the plarn around there, and just give it another twist and let it keep feeding down between your hands. What I like about spinning the plarn is I think it makes it stronger and it also seems to kind of give it a more consistent feel um, because it kind of helps blend the knots in. The knots are still a little bit bigger, but it kind of makes them the same texture as everything else. So just keep doing this process. Once you've got a good bit, untwist it, wrap it around the dowel, and you just keep going and then you'll have some spun plarn. And so what's nice with the spun plarn is you can also use it when you're working with the regular plarn. You can go ahead and maybe use this as a border on something you've made with plarn that you didn't spin. Or what's also you can also do is you can make multiply plarn, which basically means you spin some threads and or you spin some plarn and you wrap it around here. And once you're done with spinning your individual things, individual strands of plarn, you spin those two together. So you can make thicker plarn or multicolored variegated plarn. But there you go. That's the basics of spinning plarn. And if you keep at it, you will get a nice ball like this. Now let's talk about these fun things. These are the handles 
and all the little scraps from the bags I cut off when I cut them earlier. So first let's look for handles like this where you still have a loop in them. Some of my handles because my bags I was using cutting three bags at a time and they were a little bit different sizes so some of the handles did get cut completely apart but then some of the handles still have this loop in them. So what I like to do with these ones, you want to first sort them out by what still has a loop and what doesn't. So I've done that. And what you can do with these handles that still have a loop in them is you can thread them together much the same way we did with these loops that we cut. So I just take it and you're going to use the same process. So you've got a loop here and a loop here. Feed the one loop. It's kind of hard to see because it's a thing. So feed this loop through there. Grab the other side of it and pull it tight. So it might be kind of hard to see, but it's the same way I connected them before. So go watch my previous video um, if, it's, if you can't tell what I'm doing here. And so you can connect your handles together like this. Make some really thick, chunky plarn. And with this plarn that you can make from the handles, I would recommend using a size, this is a size Q hook. So this is really thick. And you're not going to make tons of this because, let's be honest, you get from two bags, you get about 37 feet of plarn but you only get four handles so you're not going to make as much of this plarn. This is just kind of fun chunky yarn so you can kind of see I've got my slip knot in here. I would obviously need to make it longer so I have um, plarn going that way but you're probably going to want to use a big hook like this size Q I've got here. So that's how I use up the handles that are still connected. So now let's look at these guys that are just kind of their own little thing, these nice little scraps. And with these, all I'm going to do is I'm literally going to just tie them together. So the way I do it is I kind of do, I guess it's an overhand knot. I feel like that's what it would be called, but I'm not like a Boy Scout or anything or Girl Scout, so I don't actually know, you know, what different knots are called. You think I would because I use yarn a lot for crochet, but I don't. So basically to tie the knot, I'm just going to kind of, you can kind of crumple them a little bit, might make it a little easier. Put them together like this. And then I'm just going to come over, make a nice little loop, put them through, and tie a knot. And I want to tie the knot as close to these ends as I can so I don't have a big bump there. But there you go. Now I've got some more plarn that's connected. There's a bit of a knot here. You can take your scissors and trim this part some if you want. And now you've got an itty bitty knot so it's not as noticeable or you can just leave it like this. So you might want to use a Q with this. You could probably go down to like a size P, um, but the Q would be easier to deal with these knots. You know, you could probably do a P on this one because the knot is a lot smaller. And then knot them together. So I've got two things that are knotted together. So now I'll just knot these ones together just like I did before. Once again, I want to slide my knot as close to the end there as I can. Cinch it up nice and tight. And there we go. Now I've got some more plarn. Also, if I want, I can tie this crazy plarn to this plarn. The way I would do it is if I ran out of loops, I would just kind of take this end, even though there's a loop here, I just kind of tighten this right here. Grab this and do the exact same little knot that I've been doing on the past several ones. Just cinch the knot up close to the end. So you can also might notice that the bags on them stretch a lot. So just be aware of that when you're working with it. So there you go. Now I've been able to use up every little bit of the bag. And actually I do have a couple scraps like these. Um, if you do go ahead and you leave the bottom thicker, you can do the exact same idea where as you do with the handles that aren't still in loops. Or if you want, you can, if you're feeling really frugal and ambitious, you can take these little ones here, tie them together just like we've been doing if you're feeling really frugal, which I'm not, so I'm not going to bother with that. But I, what I like about doing this is from three bags, the only thing I'm not using is this right here. If you look at other tutorials online, the handles get thrown out, the bottoms get thrown out, everything gets thrown out. But instead with this, you get to use up just about every part of the bag. And if you felt really ambitious, you could even use up this. But 
I'm not. I'm going to be content with how much I've been able to use. Now there's two more things that I want to mention before I go. You might be wondering if you crochet what size hook to use and there's really not quite a right or wrong answer to this because your, the plarn you make, it might be varying sizes. This plarn that I made, you know, it's pretty thin because I spun it, but then this plarn that I make, it's a little bit fluffier, so you may want to use a thicker hook with it. But as far as what hook size to use, when you pick a hook size, I would recommend you pick a hook size that's a little bit on the bigger side. Now, that's kind of relatively speaking. I mean on the bigger side for the plarn. So for example, this looks really thin. So a big size hook might not be a K, but for this, I just went ahead and I crocheted a little bit of a chain here, and I'm using an H hook. And the reason you want to use something a little bit bigger, where because if I bought a yarn that was this thickness, I might use like an F hook, but I'm using an H hook because as I said before, I left the knots and things in it, so you can see that it gets kind of bumpy along here. And so if you look at what I've crocheted so far, you can kind of see how it gets thicker and thinner. And so that's why you want a slightly larger hook to help balance out that difference in the thickness of the yarn. So now when I made this plarn, I cut the loops about the same thickness as I cut the plarn that we made today. But when I crochet with this, I'm actually using the size K hook because you can see that it's a little bit thicker because it hasn't been spun and compressed down. And so using a size K hook just gives a nice balance and also it makes it easy to work with when you hit the knots and things where it's connected. So you can see, you can see here's a bit that I've worked on crocheting just now. And you can see that it provides a nice texture and you get different looks from spinning it or not spinning it. So there you go. Now you know how to spin plarn, how to make plarn, how to use up all the little scraps. And now it's just time for you to go out there, make a whole bunch, ask all your friends for bags and things to save them for you, and go out there and make something with your plarn. So best of luck. I hope that these tutorials have been helpful. And as always, comment below. Tell me what you thought. Tell me what you're making. I love hearing from y'all. And until next time, happy crafting.